Okay, so I'm going to start this video off differently because it has to be completely different because <laughs> it is going to be completely different. I've been wanting to talk about my experiences. I, I, I had a plan. My plan was to do it when I understand what I'm going through, when I understand what's happening, when I understand what I've been seeing and feeling and, and learning. But I tend to plan, 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 and when I, once I finally execute, it's kind of diluted because what I should be doing is just making these videos as these things happen to me. And when I came to sit down to record this today because I got a little bit of bravery, a little bit of courage that's coming from the fact that today is Wednesday and in two days Aaron's video goes up where I tell this story first. And I know that it's coming so I'm feeling a little brave and I'm like okay maybe I can make this for my channel also. So as I'm getting ready really quick to record this video I realized that all the experiences are kind of almost slipping away from me. They're almost all going into one and just getting a little blurry. So I realized that I have to keep a log for myself, but a log that I actually share because I do have this log. I have a log that I've been keeping for myself. I wake up in the morning and I record what ha happened, what information I got, what memories I got, whatever. I think that I need to start sharing these things with you guys as they happen for several reasons other than just for remembering them. I think that it's going to help other people out there who are having similar experiences because from what I'm understanding, it's not rare. It's going to help me remember things and it's just kind of like a place to share this stuff. But lastly, I kind of would love to put this information out there to see if somebody can explain it, it to me. Because I do, I have Erin and I have all these books and I have all this content that I could watch now and I watch it and I'm like, okay, that, that sounds like my experience. But what I wanna do is talk about my experience and see if others can tell me what it is, if that makes sense. Now I know I'm rambling, so let's start somewhere. Let's start in the beginning. Hi, my name is Leora Alexandra. That's my first and my middle name, my real names. I am a Law of Attraction YouTuber mostly, as you know if you're a part of the baby elephant community. I've been making videos for about three years now and they've all been very self-development and Law of Attraction orientated. I originally got into self-development and spirituality after having a consciousness shift, but I've been studying and learning about the Law of Attraction since I was 14, which is 12 years now. I have extensive knowledge when it comes to the Law of Attraction and to self-development and manifesting the life of your dreams. Only more recently, however, my spiritual journey took a very, very deep dive into the far more esoteric. And this is an area that I don't have knowledge in consciously. I'm sure that subconsciously or unconsciously my higher self knows everything. I know that that's the case, but my physical self doesn't know that much about it. I think that's a reason why Aaron Dowdy is in my life. One of the many reasons why he's in my life. He has extensive knowledge about star seeds and our mission here and stuff. And since I met him, it took me about eight months or so, maybe eight, seven months to get into this and I'll explain how I got into it but he's been able to frame things for me very well so I'm thinking what can I contribute to the star scene movement and right now all I can contribute is my own are my own experiences the things that I've been the messages that I've been receiving the things I've been seeing seen and just everything that I've been feeling and I did get a strong guidance to share my experience. When I went to Sedona, if you guys remember that vlog, the uh, Jennifer and Jamie, both, both the psychic advisors that we spoke to, said that I have to share my journey. And I kind of thought that they meant more of my healing journey, but now I see that it all goes hand in hand. I want to make Starseed Saturdays a thing. It was kind of a joke at first, but I think that instead of taking away um, the Wednesday videos where I teach self-development and law of attraction, I'm just gonna add another day. And this day is for the people who are interested in hearing about ETs, UFOs, other dimensions, um, spirit guides, God, the government, the dark government cabal, different dimensions, different realities, all the weird stuff 
that's what Saturdays are gonna be for. And because it's so weird and because I have experience more than knowledge about the, the subject, it's not gonna be as structured as my, as my other videos are, which is hard for me because I really like structure. I'm a big fan of structure and of routine. And this is kinda gonna be just letting my right brain loose, kind of. So I just, I hope that you guys get something out of it, that's all. And if anything, if nothing else, I hope you get some entertainment out of me stumbling on my words and trying to get my point across and trying to explain the things, trying to explain in three-dimensional terms what I experience in other dimensions. That's gonna be interesting. So where do we start? Let's start with the fact that I've been terrified of aliens my entire life. Now I'm not just saying like scared of the movies and stuff. I'm saying I went to therapy for years and years and years. I slept in my parents' bed from when I was very young because I was too afraid to sleep in my own bed. I was too afraid, couldn't sleep with, with a, couldn't sleep in the dark, had to have a light on until well into my teenage years, I would say. My parents were always very confused about where this fear of aliens came from. I have a very vivid memory of where it came from, but my parents don't seem to remember it, which is interesting and weird on its own. I remember when I, I grew up, I, I was born here in America, but I uh, lived in Israel for about six years. And when I was there, I remember going to this exhibit. It was an alien museum with all this evidence of aliens and then at the end you would see a documentary which was in a dome you sit in a chair the chair goes backwards and you watch this documentary on the on the ceiling and the the museum was okay because you know it was a little bit too scientific for my little girl brain to understand but the movie the documentary had so much emotion in it that i remember it traumatized me and scarred me now after everything that i know i know that I've had experiences with ETs my entire life and a lot of the things that I saw as a little girl were actually real. I wasn't afraid for no reason. I was having visitations. I was being abducted. <sighs> we'll get there though. I wasn't able to watch any movie with aliens because even in my adolescent years and my teenage years, uh, early 20s and everything, I, I can't watch movies about aliens or anything like that because I'll stay up all night too scared to go to sleep. Where did this intense fear come from? So now that I'm experiencing everything I'm experiencing, everything that I'm going through, my parents, first of all, my parents begged me not to share it because they're like, we love you, we believe everything you're going through, but you've built this platform and you help so many people and you have this amazing life. And are you going to risk your reputation to tell these stories? And I was afraid of that. I really was afraid of that. What do I always tell you guys? The universe rewards bravery. So let's see. Let's see the reward I received from being brave. <laughs> Even though I was so terrified of aliens and went to therapy for so many years, my therapist traumatized me a little bit more than actual aliens, I would say. They would t like make me feel like I'm insane. In most more recent years, I overcame that fear. I was able to sleep in the dark. I was able to sleep through the night. I no longer believed in aliens. I just didn't. I stopped believing that there's anything else out there and I stopped questioning whether anything else is out there, which was interesting because my entire life I've been so afraid that there is. About two years ago, I watched this one lovely woman's videos. Her name's Bridget Nielsen, I believe, and I think Erin knows her. But she's a star seed and she talks about her abductions and all her experiences. And I remember watching her videos and being like, dude, she's insane. This is bullshit. This is crazy. Like, no. She's just trying to get attention. I can't even explain how I feel now. It's like, I had zero belief in this stuff. Zero belief. And then it happened to me. And then I remembered, and then I experienced it. And now Bridget's videos and her presence is a godsend to me because it's like, wow, somebody else gets it. I haven't been watching that much. I'll explain why. I'm not really trying to consume any alien starseed content as much as I should be going through these experiences. And that's because I don't want my brain, and I still have a fear that my brain is going to be affected by other people's experiences. And I'm gonna feel like that's happening to me because of their experiences. I want everything to be purely my own experience. So, like I was saying, did not believe in aliens, watch Bridget's videos, and I was like, nah, this is not real. Aaron and I were friends, and this was like back in like summer, this past summer, 
June, July. We weren't as close, but we were very close and we would talk on the phone for hours sometimes and we would talk about, you know, what we're manifesting, what we're doing with our channels. And one day he shared with me all this information about where he's from, like Starseed, like he's from the Pleiade, like he's this, he's that. And I remember listening to him, I'm like, that's really interesting, but I can't relate. I don't have any experiences like that. I uh, trust this guy. I think that he's very intelligent. He is no bullshit at all but I just have never had experiences like this, so I don't know if I, I can't relate. So I wasn't even really, I was interested in an entertained kind of way, an amused kind of way, but I wasn't like, oh my God, tell me more, where am I from? Because I didn't believe in it. And you might be watching this right now and thinking that you don't believe in it either, and I don't blame you because it's exactly how I felt until I started remembering. That's it, I'll just keep saying that. Now you guys know the past. I, my background is not somebody who wanted to believe in aliens, but I, for some reason I was traumatized by them as a kid, got over that, went to a stage where I just did not believe in them. And then Rhythmia came about and I did plant medicine for the first time and all my filters were taken down. Let's talk about Rhythmia a little bit because all this stuff is intertwined. God and aliens, uh, spirit guides, uh, soul contracts, all this stuff is all intertwined. It's all the same thing. It's all, if you believe in one, you have to believe in the others because it just all goes hand in hand. Aaron and I believe that when I met him about one year ago exactly actually, and we did our first video together and he told me about Rhythmia, we believed that that was a soul contract. We believed that I had to go to Rhythmia and that my spiritual awakening had to be sped up a little bit by plant medicine. And it was. So... After Rhythmia, I have this intense, life-changing transformation. I'm still myself, just deepened, more open energetically, more loving, loving myself more, have the capability to love others more. However, I go back and suddenly I can't sleep with the lights off again anymore. Actually, it started from the first night of, of um, ceremony. Since that first night of ceremony, Monday night, I was not able to sleep with the lights off. Um, this was because the filters had had completely been ripped off and I was suddenly feeling the energy of other dimension interdimensional beings everywhere. This is frightening and terrifying to somebody who's never really remembered or who doesn't remember subconsciously ever experiencing something like this. I'll start and finish this video by telling you about one week in 2019. I think it was the first week of 2019 where everything just accelerated. So it was a Thursday morning and I was, it was after New Year's and I was sleeping and in the early hours of the morning, I woke up with a big smile on my face and I felt my body levitating. I opened my eyes and all I saw was sunlight, but I know that it was not actual sunlight because when I actually physically woke up, it was like six in the morning and the sun hadn't risen yet. So when this is happening to me early in the morning, the sun would be down, right? But I'm wake, I, I wake up and my body feels like it's levitating, but I can't move around to look at anything. I'm paralyzed. But I don't care that I'm paralyzed and I have this big smile on my face and I feel this warm, unconditional love. And other than that, I also feel an entity at the edge of my bed to the right. I can't look up, I can't see it because I'm paralyzed. I'm sleeping there paralyzed. And I've had sleep paralysis many times before. I've talked to you guys about sleep paralysis before and this was not sleep paralysis. This was a whole other feeling. When I get sleep paralysis, I'm absolutely terrified, trying to kick my way out of it. And there's usually like de demons and stuff that my mind shows me and just negative things. This felt like absolute bliss, unconditional love. I felt so warm and loved and protected. And this entity that I was feeling at the edge of my bed was a feminine maternal energy. All I remember is bright light and love. Now mind you, something that I did forget to say, all of these experiences that I'm about to explain, including this one, was all before I learned about the Pleiadians. Did never heard about them before or not consciously. Um, did not watch Cosmic Disclosure. My mom begged me to watch Cosmic Disclosure and I'd always be like, no, that's all fake, that's all made up. Like if they're talking about aliens and dark government and all this stuff, secret government, secret space program, it's all fake. So I did not watch this stuff. I did not, 
allow it into my experience at all. So don't think that my any of these experiences are influenced by anything because everything I found out has happened after these experiences, okay? That's why for me, that's why I'm like, yeah, this is all real because I keep getting confirmation from other people's stories, from David Wilcock, from Corey Good, from um, Emery Smith, from all these people that experienced, all, all, like experiencers, um, abduct, abductees, all this stuff. I'm getting all this information after the fact. So that morning that happened and I kind of was just lowered back into my bed and I went back to a blissful sleep. And the next night I went to dinner at my family's house and I'm like, by the way, there was an alien in my room. I don't know where that information came from, but I told it to my parents and my family like looks at each other and laughs and they're like, you good? Like, ayahuasca messed you up? I'm like, maybe, I don't know. But there was something in my room yesterday and it was really nice and I really liked it. And they're just, I just kind of took it lightly because it wasn't scary, it was beautiful, just a cool experience. And I just kind of brushed it off. I think it was like the following Monday or Tuesday, I was asleep and in the middle of the night, I wake up and I'm paralyzed again, but I hear shuffling. I hear footsteps walking into my room. This time I wasn't scared, but there were a group of, there was five different energies, entities that surrounded my bed and I just was like paralyzed, I couldn't move, but I really wanted to see them. I wanted to see who the hell is around me. I remember I can't, I couldn't speak, so I was just like, show me who you are, like I'm scared, I'm getting scared, just show me who's here. As I say that, an arm reaches over my head just to show me that it's there. And at first, the arm is longer, more slender or more graceful than a human arm. The fingers are longer and it's a grayish blue tint but as i'm looking at it it transforms into a human arm so it's kind of like saying like here i'm here like showing their hand over me then i see three more at the foot of my bed they're just hands going up and at this point they're all human hands human hands raising up so there's three here one on my left and one on my right and the one on my left was clearly the energy was that this was the one in charge. It was a female energy. The group was mixed female and masculine energies. I don't know if they actually have gender, sex, whatever, but that's what it felt like. I couldn't move, but I was trying to very hard. I was honestly like pretty, it's pretty embarrassing to say this, but listen, I feel there, you feel just like you would feel when with your eyes closed that a person walks into the room and you feel their energy. I felt five people's energy, five beings energy. So I'm trying to fight them away, but I can't move because I'm paralyzed. And for good reason, I'm paralyzed. I don't remember what happened. There was some sort of communication there and the one on my left was just calming me down. And she's just like, there's something that we need to do. And this hand takes a long, pretty thick needle and puts it into my arm and starts weaving through my arm and pulls it out of my right ankle. And this did not feel like a dream at all, but as I was fighting it and I was, as I was trying to get out of it, suddenly it went hazy and it became a dream. And suddenly I was in a dream. And then I woke up from that dream. And when I woke up from the dream in the morning, I was sore here and I was sore on my ankle. I did not have any marks though. I kind of, in my dream, when it became a dream, I remember that they put a mark there, but I woke up and there was no mark there. I wish that there was kind of just, Proof, further proof to myself that these experiences are real. So that happened. My camera is heating up, I'm gonna let it cool down. So I decided to cut the video over here because I had actually 30 to 40 minutes more footage for the rest of the story. I think that's enough for now. That's kind of like an introduction. Part two will explain the story that I'd say on Aaron's channel in a little bit more detail. I'll go into it a little more. Thank you for listening. Thank you for having an open mind and attempting not to judge these experiences. It took me a lot to make this video. It took me a lot to put myself out there in this way. I wasn't planning on doing it right now. I was going to wait years to do this, but I've been getting every sign there is telling me that it's time to just do it. So again, thank you for being here. And if you do want part two, if you want the rest of this story, please let me know. It will be very encouraging for me. Thank you. And I love you. Have a wonderful day. And until my next video, as always, keep your vibrations way, way, way up.